ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾಮಾತರಂ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥ ಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಯೋನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜ ಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಾಪಾತ್ರೀಭಕ್ತಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾಮಾತರಂ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥ ಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಸ್ವರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಕ್ಕರುಕ್ಮು ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯಯೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಪಗತ ಪದಮಾನೈರಂತಿಮೋಪಾಯ ನಿಷ್ಠೈ ಅಧಿಗತ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥೈರರ್ಥ ಕಾಮಾನಪೇಕ್ಷೈ ನಿಖಿಲ ಜನ ಸುವೃದ್ಧಿರ್ನಿರ್ಜಿತ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಲೋಭೈ ವರವರ ಮುನಿ ಭೃತ್ಯೈರಸ್ತು ಮೇ ನಿತ್ಯೋಗ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೋಕ್ಷಪಡಿ ವಿ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಚೂರ್ಣಿಕೆ ಆರ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಚೂರ್ಣಿಕೆ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಮಂತ್ರತ್ತಿಲಂ ಮಂತ್ರತ್ತ ಕುಳ್ಳೀಡಾನವಸ್ತುವಿನ ಮಂತ್ರ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪಕ್ಕಲಿಲು ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕನಕ ಉಂಡಾಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಯಕರಮಾವಧಿ This is the Churnikai of Swami Pradhalokacharya. <coughs> the introduction to this sutra is given by Man- Swami Manavala Mamani in this form. Ippadi tan pakkal prema munda have in mantram yuvanak kariya karamo vindarudikchai hirar. Mantra tirum yenne todangi. ಅದಾವದೆ ಜ್ಞಾತವ್ಯಾರ್ಥ ಜ್ಞಾಪಕಮಾನ ಮಂತ್ರಂತನ್ಯಲಂ ಶೇಷಿತ್ವ ಶರಣ್ಯತ್ವ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯತ್ವಂಗಳಾಹಿರ ಆಕಾರತ್ರಯ ಯುಕ್ತತೆಯ ಮಂತ್ರತ್ವಕ್ಕ ವಾಕ್ಯವಸ್ತುವಾಯಿರಕ್ಕಿರ ಈಶ್ವರ ವಿಷಯತ್ತಿಲಂ ತನ್ಮಂತ್ರ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಾಧೀನ ಎಂಗಿರ ಪಡಿಯೇ ಮಂತ್ರ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಾಧೀನಮಾಯಿರುಪ್ಪದಿರುಪ್ಪದೊನ್ನಾಹಯಾದೆ ಇತ್ತೈ ಯಥಾಪ್ರತಿಪತ್ತಿಯುಕ್ತನಾಯ್ಕೊಂಡು ತನಕ್ಕೆ ಉಪಕರಿಕ್ತವಾಚಾರ್ಯ ವಿಷಯತ್ತಿಲು ತತ್ತ್ವೈಲಕ್ಷಣ್ಯಾನುರೂಪಮಾಹ ಪ್ರೇಮಾತಿಶಯನ ಉಂಡಾನಾಲ್ ಇವನಕ್ಕೆ ಕಾರ್ಯಕರಮಾವಧಿಂಗೈ ಮಂತ್ರೇ ತದ್ದೇವತಾಯಾಂ ಚ ತಥಾ ಮಂತ್ರ ಪ್ರದೇ ಗುರೌ ತ್ರಿಷುಭಕ್ತಿ ಸದಾ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಸಾಹಿ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಸಾಧನ ಎನ್ನ ಕಡವ ದಿನೇ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ಲಿ ಚಾಂಟ್ ಎ ಮಂತ್ರ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೀ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚೂರ್ಣಿಕೈ ಮಂತ್ರತ್ತಿಲಂ ಮಂತ್ರ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪಕ್ಕಲಿಂ ಮಂತ್ರತ್ತಿಲಂ ಮಂತ್ರತ್ತ ಕುಳ್ಳೀಡಾನ ವಸ್ತುವಿನ ಮಂತ್ರ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪಕ್ಕಲಿಂ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಘನಕ್ಕ ಉಂಡಾನಾಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಯಕರ ಮಾವಧಿ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಎನ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಐ ಸಪೋಸ್ಡ್ಲಿ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಮಂತ್ರೇ ತೀರ್ಥೇ ದ್ವಿಜೇ ದೈವೇ ದೈವಜ್ಞೇ ಭೇಷಜೇ ಗುರೌ ಯಾದೃಶಿ ಭಾವನಾತ್ರ ಸಿದ್ಧಿರ್ಭವತಿ ತಾದೃಶಿ ಡಿಡ್ ಐ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ 
Has anyone remembered? Uh, what exact point are you asking about? So the fruits that one obtains from these seven aspects depends upon the disposition one has towards them. That is with regard to mantra. No. With regard to the not, not, not that I know of. You, you have not mentioned no. that. This is very, very interesting. So the main aspect that works here is what we know as, what we call as faith in English language. So Yadrishi Bhavana Yatra Siddhir Bhavati Tadrishi. The fruits you attain from that particular aspect depends upon your disposition towards it. And this is very much true with regard to seven aspects. The first one is Mantra. The second one is Tirtha. Tirtha essentially means Tirthas like Ganga, Yamuna, the rivers, and also the Tirtha Kshetras, like the 108 chosen sites of Divya Deshas, as they are called. Then Dvijas with regard to Brahmins, of course, not those Brahmins who are just having the sacred thread or up Upavita or something. Those who have the knowledge of the Supreme Brahman. Such a person is the, known as a real Brahmana. So Brahmana means a Brahma Jnani or who has attained the Bhagavad Sakshat Karma or the vision of the Supreme Lord. Vijay Daive. Then with regard to Daiva actually means destiny. It also means God. So if you believe in destiny, destiny will help you. Similarly, if you be, believe in God, God actually responds to you. So if you are in the, uh, indifferent towards God, God is also indifferent to you. That is why in the Bhagavad Gita, there is a very nice saying by Lord Krishna. He says, Saboham sarva bhuteshu I am equal to all beings in this world and none is the recipient of my grace or none is the recipient of my animosity. I don't hate anybody, I don't love anybody. But he succeeds this statement by another statement where he says, Ye bhajanti tumam bhaktya mai te te but, or nevertheless, with regard to those who worship me with devotion, I am in them and they are in me. So, I have such a such a close relationship with a person who is my devotee. And in another context, Lord Krishna specifically says, Ye yathamam prapadyante tam stathaiva bhajam So, I deem or I reciprocate, that is the right word, I think. As a person sees me, I see him. That is the literal meaning of this verse. So, as a person sees me, as a person is disposed, disposed towards me, I also am disposed towards him in the same manner. That's what Lord Krishna says. So the apparent contradiction between the two statements, that is, when he says, Samoham sarva bhuteshu namedveshyostinapriya and ye bhajanti tumam bhaktya maite tejutapya. It seems to be a seemingly contradictory statement. Because when he says, Saboham Sarvabhutesha, I am equal to all beings in this world. And none is the recipient of my grace, none is the recipient of my anger or animosity or uh, whatever you would like to call it. This is the general rule. And the exception is, Ye bhajanti tumam bhaktya maite te so the general rule is, God is equal to all beings in this world. But 
with regard to those who worship with devotion, bhakti or love. He says, I am in them and they are in me. So there is such a close relationship. So this is the exception. And we know that such people are very, 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 very less. Probably 0.00001% of the population. So that is why Lord Krishna in another context says, Ye yatha maam prapadyante tam stathayu bhajami. As they look at me, I look at them. So that is why it's in Vijay Daive. As far as Daiva is concerned, that is, you can call it destiny, you can call it God, because in a way God itself is destiny and destiny itself is God. You can say like that also in a particular state of existence. And Daivagya. Daivagya means an astrologer. So if you really believe what the astrologer says, then it will happen. If you don't believe, it will not happen. But this is with regard to astrologers who were very, very honest, sincere and who never used to say something to please the person who is in front of them or the person who asks them about something. And one more very important aspect is people have the <coughs> wrong notion that astrologer means one who predicts the future. It is not like that. Because even according to Jyotish Shastra or astrology, nobody can predict three things. That is Janana, Marana and Ritu. Which means when a person is going to be born, probability is there. You can say probably at this time. But we see children who are born in the seventh month of pregnancy, eighth month of pregnancy, etc. Then when a person is going to die and also with regard to the periods of women. So it is mentioned that these three cannot be mentioned by anybody, even by the greatest of the great astrologers. So they will just mention that these are the probable events that could occur. So be careful. So it's only an inclination, inclinatory view about <clears throat> some future aspects or something if a person wants to know whether, for example, he is embarking on a new venture, he can gauge from the help of astrologers whether the planetary positions are favorable to him or not. Or if he has some disease, whether it's a curable disease or not. So such things, not in a very subtle manner, but in a gross manner, these things can be advised by astrologers, which is their main duty. And it is wrong to think that astrologers can predict our future because there is there are certain inherent problems. For example, if a person sees my astrological chart, an astrologer, he will say, I want to see your wives. He will say, I want to see your brothers or mothers or fathers or somebody else. Because my existence or my living is not dependent on me alone. It depends on the adrishta or the luck, if you can translate it in that way, upon so many other things. So astrology is about future prediction. This is not the case. It only gives you some inclinatory information about some issues that would occur in future. And it should not be used to gauge or predict the future because a true astrologer will never do it. But with regard to astrologers who are honest, sincere and knowledgeable, mark these all in a, in a highlighted way. It depends, the fruits that you attain depend on the <coughs> disposition you have towards it. Daivagya Bheshaje Gurau. Bheshaje with regard to doctors. So if you have total faith in the doctor, then your disease will be cured. If you don't have faith at all, then definitely that medicine prescribed by a particular doctor in whom you don't have faith will never work. On the other hand, if you have total faith in the doctor, even if the medicine is 
not very important. We see that certain people who are given to psychological diseases, they are given some sugar coated ordinary pills to cure their disease because the disease is in the mind and not in the body. So psychologically, when such a thing is done, their disease is cured. So daivagne bheshane and also with regard to Guru or Acharya. So if you have total faith in the Acharya that he can lead you to the Supreme Lord, then it will happen. Whether the Acharya is qualified or not is a different question. Your bhavana or your disposition towards it will give you the required fruits or results. So it is said, Mantre, Tirthe, Dvije, Daive, Daivagne, Beshade, Gurau, Yadrashi, Bhavana, Yatra, Siddhir, Bhavati, Tadrashi. If you partially believe in these things, partial results will be obtained. If you have total faith and total belief, then automatically that will happen. If you have no faith at all, nothing will happen. So among those aspects that are of this nature, mantra is the first thing. If you totally believe in the mantra, then it will do all the things that you believe it will happen. So it is a matter of faith, faith, faith and faith, nothing else. It is known as Shraddha in Sanskrit. So in all the Upanishads, or in many, many places in the Upanishads, says Shraddha Swasomya. Please believe in me. Don't have any doubts. So Shraddha is the most important aspect. And that Shraddha is nothing but deep love, deep affection for three aspects associated with mantras. Mantratilam, Mantratikullida Navastuvinam, Mantra Pradanana Acharyan Pakkalidum, Premam Ganakkaundanal. You should have utmost love and affection. Love that emanates from your from the bottom of your heart. That is what is mentioned as Premam Ganakkaundana. You should have utmost love for three aspects. The mantra itself as an entity. <clears throat> mantra Kullidanavastuvilam. So the deity that is actually propitiated by means of that mantra. And also Mantra Pradhanana Acharyan Pakkalilum. You should have utmost respect and regard for the Acharya who teaches you the mantra. So when these three occur only, then only the mantra will be effective. Otherwise, mantra will be useless. Today we see, even including me, I would like to tell, do we have so much of faith in the mantras? No. That is why we are <laughs> as we are now. Almost no way. Which you have to acknowledge openly without any hesitation. <clears throat> so, why? Why is this happening so? Because we don't have that amount of faith in these three aspects. Which is mantra, the deity propitiated by the mantra, and also the acharya who gives the upadesha or who instructs us or who initiates us into the mantra. <clears throat> so he says, Mantra <laughs> So first you have to have utmost faith, utmost devotion, utmost respect, etc. for the mantra itself, which is the combination of so many different letters. 
mantra is of the form of a sound, which is the combination of different alphabets or varnas or aksharas as they are known. So you should have lot of respect or utmost respect for the mantra, which is in the form of the permutations and combinations of different alphabets or varnas as they are known in Sanskrit. Secondly, who is the person who is propitiated by this mantra? It is the Supreme Lord Narayana. And what is his what is his speciality? Why do you think he is the most important? So Maswami Manavada Mamani says, Sheshitva, Sharanyatva, Prapit, Prapitvangalahina, Akaratri Yuktataya. The Supreme Lord has several unique, important, wonderful attributes. But three attributes that are that matter the most in the present context are mentioned here. That is, he has he possesses Sheshitva, and we possess possess Sheshatva. So the relationship bit, between the Jivatma and the Paramatma is one of the important relationships is Shesha Sheshiva. That is, we are totally subservient to the Supreme Lord. Since we are totally subservient, He is the Sheshi to us and we are Shesha to Him. As a result of that, He is Sharanya and we are Sharanas. <clears throat> so He is the person who is our whom we beseech as the person who protects us. So we do Sharanagati to him. He is Sharanya and we are the Sharanas. That is, we are the persons who take <coughs> refuge in him and he is the provider of refuge to us. And since he is the Sharanya, he is also the Prabhya. He is the person who is to be attained by us. So Sheshitva, Sharanyatva and Prabhyatva, these are the three most important aspects that the Supreme Lord possesses <coughs> in respectively in consonance with Sheshatva, Sharanatva and Prabhtritva. So we are the persons who are going to attain moksha. We are the persons who are subservient to him who by doing Sharanagati we convey that we have surrendered unto you. And also he is the Sheshi and we are the Sheshas. The yeah, meaning which you already know. So, Ahira Akaratre Yuktataya Im Mantra Tikki Vachyavastuva Irikira Ishara Vishayat Kirun. So, who is the person who is propitiated by this mantra? It is the Supreme Lord Narayana. And he is well propitiated by the mantra, this mantra. And he says, Tan mantram brahmana jinam yengira padiye mantram acharya jinam ayrupparam nahyane itta yatha pratipatti yukta nahi kundu. The third aspect is, one should have utmost, utmost, utmost respect, sincerity and all such qualities towards the acharya. So, in the Vaikanasa Trikya Sutra, Dharma Sutra, there is a beautiful statement. It says, Daivadhinam Jagat Sarvam. Uh, it is uh, in Mahabharata also, I believe, where Lord Krishna himself gives this statement because the uh, source of this mantra is not mentioned in this context. <coughs> it says, Daivadhinam Jagat Sarvam. The entire world is under the control of the Supreme Lord. But the Supreme Lord is under the control of mantras. Mantra adhinam to daivatam. And those mantras are con actually controlled by the Brahmanas. So in today's context, especially in India, there is a huge movement which says these Brahmins for those who deprived others of knowledge. 
They did not teach the Vedas to the others. They did not teach the mantras to the others. They did not educate them, etc. Et but it is not so. Because if a person has to be given something very sensible, sensitive, one has to actually test him and see whether he is responsible then. <coughs> Yes. So, for example, earlier, of course, today I understand I am not a medical expert. Earlier, they used to prescribe penicillin for certain diseases. So, penicillin used to have an adverse effect on many people who could not withstand the side effects and they used to die immediately. But it was a very I understand from my elders that for certain diseases it was a very, very, very effective remedy. So they used to give a test dose of a small quantity and observe the changes in the patient. And if the patient was able to withstand the side effects of penicillin, then they would give the full dose and cure the patient. So before that, we have seen or heard that many people who were given penicillin as a full dose used to die very soon within, a, within one hour or two hours. So the person should be able to withstand the side effects of penicillin or even the effects of penicillin. So similarly in this context, <coughs> Tan mantram brahmana dhinam. So the mantras, the Supreme Lord is controlled by the mantras. And mantras are con controlled by the Brahmins. Brahmins means, as I said, not those who have just the sacred thread, etc., who have had the vision of the Supreme Lord, who, have, who are great devotees of the Supreme Lord. And so they, he says, Tasmat Brahmanam Brahmano Mama Daivata Tasmat Brahmana Daivatam Mama. So Lord Krishna says, the Brahmins who are such, who have such qualifications are my gods. That's what he says. So he says, mainly. मंत्रे Trishu Bhakti Sada Karya Sahi Prathamasadhanam. So even as a person takes the Samashrainam or Sri Vaishnava Diksha from a qualified Acharya, immediately what he has to do, he has to have utmost devotion, sincerity, etc., dedication, and all other associated qualities with regard to these three, that is the mantra, the deity worship by the mantra, and also the acharya who initiates the aspirant, spiritual aspirant. So, Trishu Bhakti Hi Sadakarya, the spiritual aspirant of the Shri Vaishnava who wants to attain moksha, should always be thinking about these three things. He should have utmost respect for these three, always, always, on all, all the 24 hours. So then, how does he eat? How does he sleep, etc.? Even during eating, during sleeping, etc., always he should be thinking about the uniqueness or greatness of the mantra, the deity worship by the mantra and the acharya who facilitates this. So it says, Trishu Bhakti Hi Sadakarya. 
So the first step towards proceeding in the spiritual path is not even chanting the mantra, but a repeated chanting of the mantra <coughs> or japa as it is known, but continuous devotion, respect, dedication to all these three things. It is the mantra and the <coughs> deity propitiated by the mantra and also the acharya. Unless this happens, there will be no use if he, even if he chants the mantra 10,000 times or 1 million times or how many times or <clears throat> So that is why it says, he says, Yannakkadavadire. <clears throat> so unless this happens, there is no use of having initiation in the mantra. And having said that, Pudlalokacharya goes forward, hence he says, Samsarihal Tangalayam Ishwaranayam Barande Ishwaraka Inkariyatayam Mirande Irando Amingira Hiramuminike Samsara Mahira Rinkadali Kadalide Videndano Pada Sarveshwaran Tantrapayade You are held unmaring the Karamaram Sherum Padi Tane Shishinumai Achar Yerumai in the Rimantrati Vilita Arunina. First, I will explain the literal meaning of the Sutra or Churnike. Samsari Hel Tangalayam Ishwaranayam Marandi. So, these people are we people. That is how it has to be mentioned. So, we are all under bondage, as we know. All of us, are, how are we? Samsari hal tangalayam ishwaranayam marandi. We have forgotten about ourselves. In the sense, we don't know what is the real nature of our Atma. Do we know what is the real nature of my Atma? Do I, do I know what my Atma is? No. Just I have some inclination. I have some inclination about my Atma. By what is known as the eye consciousness or Ahabartha as it is mentioned in the Vedanta Shastra. But that is all I know about myself. I don't know anything from where I have from come, from where I will go. What are the sins associated with my Atma? What are the good deeds associated with my Atma? None of us, none of us know anything about ourselves. So that is why Pudladokacharya says, Samsari hai tangalayam marandi. They have forgotten about, we have forgotten about ourselves in the sense we don't know what our own real nature is. And also we have forgotten about ourselves. Then have we, do we remember the Supreme Lord as he has to be remembered? No. Ishwaranayam Marande. So we, samsaris, have forgotten about ourselves. We don't know what our two natures are. Similarly, we have forgotten about the Supreme Lord also. Always we are engaged in some laukika activity or activity that is associated with our external life. Secondly, what has happened? Most of us have given up all the kainkariyas or servitudes or activities that are in the form of servitude unto the Lord. We may do some puja, we may do something for a few minutes, but that is not the case. That is why later he is going to <coughs> quote a verse which says, Yen muhurtam kshanam vapi vasudevo nachintyate sahari tan mahadukham sabhrantisaja vikriya. Even if for a moment a person does not think about the Supreme Lord, such a person he is supposed to be under illusion. He is supposed to have lost everything in life. And he is supposed to have gained all those things he should not have gained in life. I would like to mention an anecdote in this regard. 
which all of us have to think, think over and over and over again. So we have all heard about Swami Parashara Bhatta, who was the only son of Kurat Tarman or Kuresha, who was the direct disciple of Ramanuja Acharya. Uh, two sons are there, Parashara Bhatta and Vedavyasa Bhatta. So, <clears throat> he used to have a lot of deities at home in the form of the Archa form, iconic form. And some days he would actually ask one of his assistants, who was also a disciple, to <clears throat> do the Tiruvaradhana. So, Tiruvaradhana involves offering all the shadasanas as we call them. That is mantrasana, and starasana, alankarasana, pular mantrasana, bhojyasana, shayasana. So it is like to put it in a nutshell or to give a very simple <coughs> method of understanding what Thiruvaradhana is all about. <coughs> it is like waking a child a very young child, which is probably one or two or three years old. So after waking the child, we actually help him. Since uh, it's a child having Prakriti Sambandha, of course it has to <coughs> go through its dietary procedures. Then he is bathed. After bathing, we offer food. And then we make him sleep. After actually bathing him, we, the mother actually decorates the young child. That is all in the Indian tradition, not in the foreign tradition, unfortunately. But there is nothing wrong if the foreigners also follow this tradition. Because the young child is considered to be the incarnation of Lord Krishna. And if it is a girl child, it is supposed to be the incarnation of Goddess Lakshmi. So similar procedure is performed to the Supreme Lord where <coughs> Suprabhata is actually sung to wish him a very good morning. Then you have Mantrasana, which is in the same form. Then you have <coughs> Snarasana, taking, bathing the Lord. Then the Alankarasana, decorating the Lord with beautiful flowers beautiful clothes, then <clears throat> anointing him with chandanam or sandalwood, and then offering him food, bhojyasana, then punar mantrasana, then shayasana, making him sleep. So, <clears throat> this, this, when Swami Parashara Bhattar was unable to perform the Tiruvaradhanam himself, he used to delegate the task to one of his very close disciples. And that disciple used to take nearly four to five hours to perform the Trivaradhana in a very, very, very detailed way. So while doing the Trivaradhana, you have to have five different vessels. One main vessel, which is known as Tirukkaveri, where the main sacred water is stored. Then that has to be <clears throat> put into five different vessels. The Argya Padya, Padya Patra, Argya Patra, Padya Patra, Achamani Patra, Snaniya and Shuddhodaka. So there is elaborate procedure is there. And then in each of the asanas, in the Alankara asana, Dhyana asana, Shaya asana, etc. Separately, Argya Padya, Achamaniya has to be offered. Argya, from the Argya vessel, Argya has to be offered once. From the Padya vessel, Padya has to be offered twice. From the Achamaniya vessel, Achamaniya has to be offered thrice. And <clears throat> in between, each time <clears throat> the Uddharani or the spoon-like uh, thing has to be dipped into the Shuddhodaka or the pure water uh, uh, vessel, because one should not get mixed with the other. 
So to do, we had to do this, repeat this in all the asanas. That is the procedure. So he used to do this in a very, very <coughs> systematic manner. He used to take care of Argya, water should not be mixed with Padya. Padya, water should not be mixed with Achmaniya. So very, very meticulously he used to do like this, offer it, offer it, offer it every time. So by the time he completed the Thiruvaravanam, it would take four to five hours. <coughs> so after he completed Thiruvaravanam, Swami Parashara Bhattu used to, oh, very early you have finished. How, how is it that you have completed the Thiruvaravanam so early? Whereas on the other hand, when Parashara Bhattu used to perform the Thiruvaravanam, he used to do it in two or three minutes. So he used to open the doors of the Kovil Alvar, as it is known in Shiva Ishtana Sampradaya. The <coughs> box-like structure which houses all the deities, the Salagrams, etc. is known as Kovil Alvar or the Alvar which is in the form of a temple. So Swami Parashara Bhattri used to open the Kovil Alvar. So within 5 or 10 minutes, he used to do all the, all the procedures. Offer Naivedyam, perform an Arati and close the thing and said, yes, Thiruvaradnam is complete. <laughs> so many a times, on a different note, kindly don't connect it to this, uh, what I am telling now. On a different note, when certain people, Sri Vaishnavas, for example, people like me, we do Thiruvaradnam in two or three minutes or five minutes. Yeah, when we had to travel or something. So they jokingly ask, one asks the other, oh, is it butter through our Adnakramam? <laughs> is it the procedure of Parashara butter that they have followed in through our Adnam? <laughs> but it's on a different note. <laughs> so Swami Parashara butter used to ask like this, but when he used to do himself, he used to do it within five or ten minutes maximum. So this happened for many days. Then the disciple thought, what is this? I am doing in such an elaborate manner. <coughs> but my Acharya is asking, how, how quickly you have completed? Whereas when he himself performs the Dhruvaradnam, he just does it in 5 or 10 minutes. Is it not wrong on his part to ask him to do like this? <coughs> but in those days, disciples were very careful they would not confront their Guru because Guru is the person who is to be most venerable, who is most venerable. So, the disciple who was doing so, he approached the mother of Parashara Bhattu, namely Andal, who was the wife of Kuratava, a great, great devotee by herself, in her own right. He approached her and asked uh, Amangar, he used to call those days, Oh, mother, I have a small doubt. Every day I perform Thiruvaradnam in such an elaborate manner. Great devotion, four or five hours I spent for this. But your son, my Acharya, he asks me, how come you have completed so fast? Whereas when he himself performs Thiruvaradnam, he does it in a matter of five minutes. I am really perplexed to know this is happening like this, what to do. Kindly excuse me if I am wrong. <coughs> then Swami Parashar Bhattar's mother, Andal Devi, he said, I will answer your question on a day. So please give me some time. So one day Swami Parashar Bhattar was seated to have Prasaram lunch. And along with him, it so happened that this gentleman, who was also his disciple, whose disciple who was performing the Trivaradna on behalf of his Acharya, he was also seated <coughs> in the same Panti, as we call it, in the same line. And Swami Parashara Bhattar's mother was serving them the Prasadam. So, as soon as in our sampradayam, you know, after rice is 
served immediately the ghee has to be served and after that parishachanam has to be done and all those things i am sure <coughs> you would be familiar about the procedure so on that day what happened purposefully instead of <coughs> serving ghee immediately after serving rice so my parashar butter's mother <coughs> served the neem oil which looked like ghee only and in those days probably they used to consume four of ghee because it is very beneficial to health and uh, from a very modern point of view they used to burn lot of calories because they used to walk swim and do lot of physical activity so probably they would have about 50 to 100 grams of ghee every day you can imagine like that so she offered probably one one tablespoon or two or three tablespoons spoon fulls of full, spoons full of neem oil which we all know is extremely extremely sour and she was just observing what happens so as is the norm first the acharya has to take the aposhana satyam tarte raparishin jami so we had to circumambulate the leaf having the prasadam with water and then amrita opastara namasi the aposhana has to be taken that is the water has to be placed in the hand and taken like this and then the pranahuti has to be taken pranaya swaha apanaya swaha yanaya swaha udanaya swaha samanaya swaha brahmane swaha shri govindaya namaha so along with the ghee this has to be taken and after the acharya does it the shishyas have to do it. that is the shri vaishnava tradition because it is symbolic many people don't know why it is to be done like that or many people even don't know that the disciples have to wait until the acharya has taken the aposhana and pranahuti and then only they have to do it. that is the shri vaishnava tradition so parashar butter he did it first then uh, he mixed the rice with the liquid not ghee but the neem oil that was served and then he took it and then he started to consume the prasada <coughs> then after few moments the disciple took the aposhana and then he said prana swab oh he stopped mother mother what have you done he shouted why what is the matter the mother of swami parashar butter asked no no instead of serving ghee you have served neem oil i cannot even taste it it is so sour how to eat this so swami parashar butter was totally unmindful of what is happening around him then his mother actually brought him to the current context he said oh parashara butter please see what are you eating can you make out the taste of what you are eating today i have served neem oil instead of ghee you are eating that without any difference what is the matter then so i parashara butter wait let me see he said and he took one more a few more morsels mixed with that neem oil and said ah oh, yes yes it is very sour now i understand then swami parashara butter's mother asked what is this you have taken a few handfuls have did you not realize earlier that it was neem oil that i had served oh no i was i was totally unaware of what i was eating because i was thinking about the divine qualities of the supreme lord narayan <clears throat> about his different vatsalya saushilya solabhya etc i could not make out really make out what the taste of what i am eating is then swami parashara butter's mother told the disciple see even one one handful of rice mixed with neem oil you could not consume because you are always thinking about your external senses and the objects of those sense organs 
Whereas he, how Parashara Bhattar is. Generally, he may miss some minor things. But Nimoil is so sore that even a small iota of Nimoil will actually make a lot of difference while consuming. But I have served almost two to three tablespoons of Nimoil. And he has consumed that without even thinking about its taste. Let me see how deeply he is immersed in this opinion. So when you are <coughs> doing Thiruvaranam, of course you are very careful about it. But that devotional aspect or aspect of devotion is missing in your Thiruvaranam. That is why even if you do it for four hours or five hours, he asks you, how have you completed it so fast? Because that is why it says, Trishu Bhakti Sadakarya Sai even while not doing Thiruvaradam, he is always thinking about the Supreme Lord. Whereas you, even while doing Thiruvaradam, you are not immersed in that. So that is the difference between you and him. So that is how a true Sri Vaishnava should be. And only then such a mantra will be fruitful to a person. That is what he says in this sutra. And he says, Manavana Mavani does not further comment. He says, Rishu Bhakti Sadakarya Sahit Prathama Sadhanam Yennakkada Vedire. That is all I have to say in this context. Nothing more. Because already what is said in this shloka is more than what we can digest, more than what we can <coughs> really do in our lives. So with these words, I complete today's exposition. Any questions they are most welcome to ask. So Swami, thank you very much. Um, can I, uh, if, if anybody else has some questions first, perhaps they can ask. Um, you started off uh, speaking about uh, Sutra 4 and saying that uh, one has to have total faith in the Acharya. Um, my understanding was that uh, that there, according to Akta Panchikam, there is that that Acharya Abhimana, oops, what happened? Acharya Abhimana uh, or Acharya Property can be can be a separate path to property done unto the Lord. So is it separate or do we do it uh, together? So I want to know what you have understood by Acharya Abhimana. <laughs> what I... By the word Acharya Abhimana. So... Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry if I have taken it. Uh, okay, so I don't, I'm not sure exactly the meaning of Abhimana, but... But, uh, but uh, one has to have full... One, if somebody has full faith in uh, in the acharya only, and he doesn't understand perhaps the other aspects of uh, of property. Even uh, it's not uh, uncommon that you are slightly kindly. Don't, <laughs> excuse me. No, no problem. So Please correct me. Mistaken, because even I was mistaken uh, until I was corrected by my acharya. So it is very beautifully said in the Shiva Bhushanam. <clears throat> Acharya Bhimanam Tan Prapati Pole Upayam Tarangalit Angamumai Swatantra Mumai Rikum Bhakti Lashaktanak Prapati Prapati Lashaktanak Ide Ide Pratam Swarupatai Pallavitamakum In Bupushpitamakum Anantaram Palapariyantamakum So he says Bhakti Lashaktanak Prapati so a person who is incapable of following the path of bhakti is, for him, prapatti is mentioned. For him who cannot do prapatti also, this is the path. That is acharya abhimana. And he says, acharya abhimana tan prapatti pole upayantarangalak angamumai satantramumai. Acharya abhimana is like prapatti. So, bhakti and prapati, when you say bhakti is higher, prapati is 
bhakti is very difficult to do or perform or follow. Prapati is relatively easier. But Prapati is the Anga of Bhakti. Prapati pole upayantarangalak Anga mumai. It is part and parcel of the higher path. But it is also independent. It can also be independent. So you have first state Bhakti, then Acharya, then Prapati, then Acharya. Similarly, Acharya Abhimana. It is an Angar part of Prapati and also Bhakti. But it can be independent also. Prapati pole upayan tarangadak anga mumai swatantra mumai rikkum. But what is Acharya Abhimana? Not your dedication or uh, respect for the Acharya. But you are being recipient of the Abhimana of the Acharya. You have to be the recipient of the Abhimana of the Acharya, not you are having respect for the Acharya. Of course, that is very much required. But in this context, Acharya Abhimana means becoming the grace of the, becoming the recipient of the grace of the Acharya. Becoming the recipient of the love of the Acharya. So, in another, in the story of a great, great saint, even in the Narada Pakhyana, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, you have this. So, due to the insistence of the sages, Narada, in his previous, you are an expert in Bhagavatam, I need not tell you. Narada was given the vision of the Supreme Lord for one moment only. Due to the insistence of the sages, he did not have any qualification on his own to become the, to have the divine vision of the Supreme Lord. Similarly, in another, in the story of another great, great, great devotee of the Lord, that devotee requests the Lord to reveal himself, reveal the Lord to that, to a particular devote, disciple of his. Then the Lord who is able to converse, or the devotee who is conversed, conversant with the Lord, who is able to converse directly with the Lord. Then the Lord says, no, he does not have the <coughs> qualification to have my vision, I will not do it. Then the devotee says, for my sake, you reveal himself to him for one moment. Then it is said, yes, if you are insisting, for your sake, I will do it for you. So similarly here, what we say, Acharya Abhimanami Uttarakam, when we say that, it means you have to be the great recipient of the Abhimana of the Acharya. So that is what Acharya Abhimana really means. That is what I understood from my Acharya. Of course, the disciple has to have great devotion towards the Acharya. But he has, this devotee has to be the recipient of the grace of the Acharya, which is enough. That is why in the Sri Rangarada Stavar somewhere, Parashara Bhattra says, Dhatte Rangi Nijama Pipadam Deshika Deshakanchi. Very beautiful verse. So he says, This Ral Ranganatha, he says, Rangi. Dhatte Rangi Nijama Pipadam Deshika Deshakanchi. The Supreme Lord Ranganatha will give his own abode. His own, he will make the Jivatma come to his own abode, that is Paramapada, based on the orders of the Acharya, not request, orders of the Acharya. He says, Deshika Adesha Kanshi. So it is very much true. But when, when the disciple becomes the, that is why even uh, Yamunacharya says, what does he ask uh, the Supreme Lord? He says, 
Mahatma Bihi Maam Avalokyatam Nayai. Very beautiful expression in Sanskrit. Only he has done that. He says, I ask you to do one thing. You make me oh, You make me seen by the great Acharyas. That's, that is enough. I should become, I should come into their visual, to put it in a scientific language. I should enter their visual field. <laughs> their field of vision. They should look at me with grace. That is enough. So he says, Mahatma Bihi Maam Avalokyatam Naya. He asks the God, Supreme Lord, and says, I don't want your grace. I want you to facilitate a great Acharya or a great Jnani who is your devotee to have a look at me, to just see me. That's all that is enough. So that is what Acharya Abhimana means. So if you become, you just have a total devotion to the Acharya and serve him, your job is done. But that Acharya has to be like Parashara Bhattara Ramanja Acharya Kuruta. <laughs> that is the great. He should have had the mission of the Supreme Lord and he should be a real devotee. That is the glitch there. So has your question been answered? Yes, I think so. Um, so uh, from I'm just trying to understand that uh, there are qualifications for somebody who wants to take to Bhakti Yoga. And then there are other qualifications for, uh, for somebody who, who cannot take to Bhakti Yoga but takes to property. And then there may also be qualifications for somebody who may even have difficulty with property but can, can, uh, <clears throat> can resort at least to the feet of, a, of, of an Acharya. Yes. Um, and uh, so... But in, in, in all the cases, this is a common thread that we have to have faith in the Acharya. Whether we do Bhakti Yoga, whether we do property, or whether we do uh, uh, Acharya Abhimana, or, or if, we do, if we're doing it separately. Uh, so uh, also the question came up in our group about uh, the qualifications for Bhakti. Because some people say Bhakti can be performed by everyone. Yes. Bhakti Yoga. No, it can be performed by everyone in the sense. Everyone is eligible to do bhakti. See now, I will give an example. I want to um, study in Harvard Business School. Are you eligible? You are also eligible. I am also eligible. Every human being is eligible. But that is why it is said, what is Adhikara? In the Shastras, there is a beautiful thing. So, who is the Adhikari of a Bhakti, Bhakti Yoga Adhikari? So, Adhikara involves two aspects, Arthitva and Samarthya. Arthitva is he should have a deep longing to attain that. Second is he should have the capability to attain that. So, Arthitva, of course, of course, Many people don't have Artitva, for example, uh, even including me, you can say, or many, many of my, many of the people we see around us, they are not interested in liberation. Let's say we, we live a happy life here without diseases, with all good things. Of course, bad things come, we don't care about them, we endure them and end our life. We are not interested in something other than we are something like that. I have come, I have seen many people say it. And they are, in their own way, they are justified. We don't say no. So first you have to have that Arthitva, that is you have to have a deep longing to attain Supreme Lord. And then you have to have the capability. Now, suppose I, that is why I gave, give the example to show the contrast. Suppose I want to win Wimbledon tennis championship today, can I do it? I also want to be called as Wimbledon champion, hold the trophy in my hand, where millions of people will be cheering and all those things. Arthitva is there, Samarthya is not there. <laughs> or if I want to go to Harvard Business School, I have to write so many exams. Of course, their age might not be an issue. 
but do I have that capability to do it now? So for Bhakti Yoga or for anything, everybody is eligible if they have the Rani, but do they have the capability? That is the question. So it is relatively simple with regard to Prabhupada and it is relatively simpler with regard to Acharya. But you have to have such an Acharya. <laughs> Today that is the challenge. Of course we respect all the Acharyas who have come in the traditions. And that what we say the Acharya, the Parampara itself has some sanctity. We don't deny that. But do those Acharyas have had the vision of the Supreme Lord? That is the question. But we need not belittle them because of that. So, of course, they can be a medium for us to go to write to Ramananda Acharya, who will actually take us to the Acharya. That is why we say, we say Asmad Acharya is Ramananda And these are all representatives. That is why even Pilladok Acharya says, an Acharya who, who is initiating a Shishya should never think that I am initiating this person. He should think that I am the representative of my Acharya. And the Shishya whom I am initiating he is my Satirtha, he is my he is like my classmate. Both of us are the Shishya, disciple of our Acharya. How beautifully they have mentioned all these things. Why we say Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya is the most evolved Sampradaya. All these nuances they have mentioned, which has not been mentioned in other Sampradayas. So we, we don't belittle others, but we, we, we feel proud about our Sampradaya. It is, it is like this. So somebody also mentioned that, uh, uh, especially in Tenacharya Sampradayam, uh, some people are thinking in a very, that uh, Sri Ramanujacharya has done property and therefore we are all, we are all being carried by his property. Uh, and uh, I mean, somebody, somebody was saying to us that uh, this is... No, this but is a, a that is a different question. Whether property has to be performed as a, as a ritual separately or not. That is with regard to that question. So in Tenajari Sampradaya, Prapati is not performed separately as a ritual, as it is done in Radagalai Sampradaya. Baranyasam. Yeah, with regard to that aspect it is mentioned, we need not perform Prapati separately as an event or as a ritual, as it is done in that Sampradaya. Both have their own pluses and minuses. It depends, it is now, it is focused on the person rather than as a rule or as an issue. I will, uh, we can discuss about that later on some other day. Okay, so, um, yeah, some other things that I had was uh, that, the, I think in the second sutra or, or, or one of the sutras, it, it mentions that uh, the, the mantra should not be chanted loudly. Uh, there is something, there is nowhere it has been mentioned that it should not be chanted loud. It, should, it has to be kept as a rahasya. That is, that is, suppose today I am alone in my house. If I say Om Namo Narayanaya, I have doubt you, who can prevent me? Who has prevented me? So, that is why I said mantra can be chanted in three manners, Uchaihi, Upamshu and Manasa. Suppose I say, oh Narayana, 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 there is nothing wrong in that. But the mantra, it should not create any bad impression or it should not end up troubling somebody in some way. For that purpose, they might have mentioned, don't mention it loud. But that doesn't mean in all circumstances it should never be mentioned loud at all. So Uchayhi means loudly it can be chanted. Upamshu means in a whispering tone. That is where the lip movement is visible. Like that. And totally mentally. That is Manasa Japa. And Manasa Japa leads us to Dhyana. That is what the Yoga Shastra says. 
So ultimately, it uh, culminates in meditation or upasana of the Supreme Lord. So Uchayi is uh, the Upamshu is better than Uchayi, and Manasa is better yeah. than Upamshu. That's what is mentioned. But so, there is nothing wrong in telling it loud, hmm. unless and, it has some other issues, some other aspects. And somebody, I mean, the story of Ramanuja saying it loud from the Gopuram. That is a different context that we'll we'll discuss separately some other time. Yeah. But each and each and every mantra has to be learned from an acharya. Of course. Because I, I, in, in actually in, from an acharya who has attained it. See now, suppose I will give once again a very, very ordinary uh, example. Suppose now you have to learn golf, playing golf. Would you if you have an option, would you learn it from Tiger Woods or if you would you learn it from a person uh, who has uh, learned golf just tomorrow, today? Or uh, would you la learn uh, uh, tennis from Roger Federer if he is ready to teach? So if he is accomplished, he can train others. So at the highest level, that is how it is. So you cannot... Uh, you can see the tennis manual and learn tennis itself, but unless you learn it from a guru, how can you become a great tennis player? The manual is so perfectly written. Anybody can see a tennis manual and learn, but can a person become a champion without a coach? So please tell me. No, I understand. But uh, for instance, in Tiruvaradhanam, maybe, maybe somebody does a... <clears throat> has to do Tiruvaradhanam of different deities. There will be a mantra for each deity, and each and every mantra one has to get from a from an acharya. Yes. So, if a very highly accomplished acharya is not available, then whoever is available, yes, we have to learn it from him. Uh, learning from a book is not advised. General ninety nine percent. So today, why, why the mantras that we learn are not very effective? Because the acharyas are not accomplished. That doesn't mean we belittle the role of an acharya. But if the acharya has become a siddha in the mantra, mantra siddha, then that is totally different. If such persons due to the age of Kali have vanished, so we depend upon the Ramananda acharya himself as our savior through the acharya. Right. So that so is it the mantra the mantra itself is, is is the upaya or the or the Lord is the upaya? Sorry, mantra is itself is the upaya or, or the or the Lord himself. The Supreme mantra, Lord. Once again, once again, mantra mantra itself is the Lord of a uh, form of the Lord. So mantra itself can be that is why it is said mantra murtaya devata. So at a particular stage, the mantra itself becomes your Lord. So mantra, there is no difference between the Lord and the mantra. So in Yoga Shastra, you say, Tasya Vajaka Pranavaha. So Pranava, we accept it here also. Pranava is the denoter of the Supreme Lord. So there is no difference between the Supreme Lord and Pranava in a, in a particular stage. So, when you chant that mantra with that particular perspective in mind, then the Lord himself becomes the Upaya. These are all, you cannot generalize all these things. You find different types of sayings given today in different contexts. So, they should be resolved in a very amicable manner because they are being told in different types to different people. And the the, Achar, the acharya has to t teach along with the mantra. He has to teach the meaning of the mantra, the mantra artha, and also the use of the mantra. Or some other acharya can teach that. Yeah, that also we will discuss because in Ramananda acharya's case, it was different. Mantra artha was taught by a different person. Mantra was taught by a different person. So that we will discuss separately. Okay. And finally, my final my final uh, small question was. The very nice story about Parasarabhata and uh, the neem oil. Um, so 
I have noticed though that some people are some people are doing some things munadi pinadi. Sorry? Munadi pinadi. Munadi okay. pinadi is a is a system where we we chant we maybe chant uh, Nityanusandanam, the first word and the last word of each part. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry, excuse my Tamil pronunciation is very bad. No, no, no. Munadi yeah. pinadi. And, and so, so we get the idea that uh, only only a person of supreme uh, uh, advancement is able to to do Munadi Pinadi. It seems like Parasar Bhatti is doing things very uh, very quickly. But is it okay for 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 ordinary persons to do this Munadi Pinadi? No, Munadi Pinadi it should not be done. No, no, it's in a different context. See what happens. Suppose uh, you cannot. Suppose I am in the uh, that is Thiruvara uh, Nakramam. You have to chant the Brahm Nityanu Sandhana. Brahm Nityanu Sandhana means you have to pandand, the continuous Sutam, then Tripalya, Chit Tripavai, then Amalanadi Piran. In some schools of Shivaishnavism, then Kovil Thiruvai Muni, Raman Janu Nadi Upadesh Mani. Nearly eight to nine. Prabandhas or uh, works have to be chanted. But uh, this will take, if it is chanted properly, it will take two and a half hours. <laughs> so they have kept Lagunityana Sandhana. Lagunityana Sandhana means you don't look all through family, you will do this, you will do this, some portions. But there also, if a person doesn't have time, then the Munnadi Pinnadi is chanted. So it's not, uh, that is uh, slightly in a different context than Parashara Bhattas. Because all the Shadasana, suppose, see, one thing is in the beginning, that is why I said it is the, based on the Adhikari or the state in which the devotee is. In the beginning, in the Guru Parampara Prabhava, both are mentioned. So in the beginning, actually, the Arjya Patra, Padya, Achamaniya, etc., you have five vessels. The water of one should not mix with the other. You have to be very careful that I mentioned very specifically. That means, suppose you are having one vessel where you have water to wash your feet and in another vessel water to drink is there. Do you mix these two? You never do that. Therefore, while offering also Argyapadya, Padyapadra, all these things should be kept separately and one should not, one water should not mix with the other. So you should be very careful while offering that also dimension. But after you reach a certain stage, you transcend all these things. Then what happens? You don't, you are not aware of what is Arkya, what is Padya, what is Atma. That is why in the Dhruvaradhana Krama, first Manasaradhana is the first thing. You do Bhuta Shuddhi and all those things, which is very, very huge, uh, which is very important, very unique aspect. After you do Manasaradha, then you say, Bah, ye is from Bhagavan Pundari Kaksha Hridya Gantumaya Kritam Atmasat Kuruda Devesha Bah, ye is from Samyagarchaye. Until now, I have performed all the Manasaradhanas. Everything Marasam Kampayami Purma Deen Divya Lokam Dharana Manimayam Mandapam Tatrashesham Tasmin Dharma Dipitam Taduparikamanam Tamarakrahini Shta Vishnum Devi Vibhusha Yudhakana Muragam Bhavake Vainateyam Seneshan Dvarapadam Dhura Mukhaganam Vishnu Bhaktan Prabhadyadin Purma Deen All those things and you say Manasam Pratidivasamaham Manasam Kalpayami. So, my, one of my Acharyas used to say, out of 100%, 65% is Manasaradhana marks. 35% of marks is given to Bhashya. So, ultimately, it is. So, in the beginning, you start with Bhashya Radhana is given more importance. But as a devotee progresses, he immerses himself in the Lord and he is unable to perform Mamasara, Bhakya Radhana like Swami Parashima. So each thing is given a lot of importance, but for whom, when these things have to be properly. 
So any other question from any other person, just one, we have about one or two minutes time. <laughs> Already it has taken one and a half hours. Any other question? Swami, so, last question I just wanted to ask was, um, you said that prapati is an anga bhakti. Yes. Is it that when we put, yeah, and you also said that it can be practiced separately from bhakti. So is it that because of that, we can we are saying that prapati is either um, less than bhakti or we say it's the same level as bhakti? If, if you say it's an anga, then you think that it's like part of it. Yes. No, bhakti, bhakti cannot be performed without prapati. At that time, prapati plays a secondary role. Bhakti plays the main role. But then prapati itself becomes the upaya. Then it gains the primary role. So I will just give a very mundane example. In the family hierarchy, that is how it was supposed to be. The father is supreme. Mother plays a secondary role. But suppose the father has gone abroad or he's gone outside for one or two years. Then mother plays the primary role of what father is playing. So then father and mother plays the subsidy and she takes up both the roles. So it's something like that. It's a vague example, but not fully applicable, but just for you to understand. Okay. Thank you. Shri Mathe Raman Jaya Namaha. Shri Mathe Dharavara Muniya.